Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I have a card as part of the Newton's Nook Designs March Release Blog Hop and today for the Blog Hop you can leave comments on all the blogs and enter to win this new set. It is the Farmyard Friends set and it includes um, several different critters including a chicken and a cow and some really great sentiments like Oh Sheep from the Whole Herd or Go Hog Wild. And for today's card, I'm going to be doing some Copic coloring and masking, and I'm going to create a scene with a bunch of the farmyard critters. I started off with some Copic quality paper. I use 110 pound Georgia Pacific cardstock, and I'm going to be doing some masking as mentioned, and so I'm going to start by stamping some of the images on Inka Dinka Doo stamping mask paper. And since I'll be using the My Favorite Things Black Licorice Hybrid ink for my Copic stamping today, I'm going to be using it to do my stamping on the mask paper as well. I've chosen just a few images from the stamp set including the sheep, the cow, the chicken, and the farmer. There's also a pig in the stamp set, but I wasn't quite sure um, that he would I could be able to fit them all in the scene in a way that I liked. Uh, I think my particular favorite in the stamp set is actually this cute little sheep. Uh, I kind of think that's funny how his head is so much bigger than the rest of his body. And so I'm going to just stamp the sheep, cow, and chicken onto the mask paper. I decided not to stamp the farmer on the mask paper because I thought that he'd be a little bit tricky to cut out, but in retrospect, I think the cow is probably the trickiest one to, get, to cut out. But also with the farmer, I didn't want to have his full image, the one with the pail, because um, it's, it's one of his hands, he has a pail in it, and I didn't think that that would balance out well in the scene and so I'm going to be stamping him so that he's essentially looking behind the cow and you won't see that pail. So in order to build this scene I had to really think carefully and plan things out and so you'll see that a lot of times I'm holding the stamp with the, you know with it on the block above the image to see if that's what I really want to do before I stamp it down. And if your stamps were really clean, you could actually even physically lay them on top of each other. But one of the great advantages of clear stamps is that you can see right through them. So not only do you know exactly where you're stamping, but you can think carefully about your placement as you go. So I started with the chicken, and then I put the mask over him and stamped the cow. And so if something is masked and then you stamp on top of it, the image that you stamp will look behind the other image, will seem to be behind the other image. So I'm stamping a image, then moving on to the next one. And I actually did save myself a little bit of time with that cow by not cutting out the tail. And since I positioned it carefully where the tail didn't need to be masked off, in order to stamp the next critter, it allowed me to you know, just save a little bit of time by not having to worry about that. So I stamp one image, mask it off, then move on to the next image so they all look like they're in a line. Once I got to the farmer, I knew that I wanted to fit the sheep into the scene, but I didn't have a mask for the farmer, so I couldn't stamp the sheep right next to the farmer. And I think that in my head, I was originally planning to stamp the sheep and the cow first, cover them both with masks, and then stamp the farmer, but I didn't remember to do that, and so I was just... I just went with it and I had to do with, make do with where I had gone with the scene so far. And I decide to stamp the sheep a little bit farther off, mask him, and then stamp the chicken an extra time. I had originally only planned to add each, uh, one, each critter only once to the scene. But, you know, like I said, I'm just going to make it work with what I have. There's no point in starting all over again. Maybe I'll do it a different way next time. And so I'm just going to fit that chicken in there, overlapping him a little bit with the sheep. I considered placing another chicken on the end to do, like, the rule of odds and having three things. You know, in this case, three chickens. But I decided that that would actually be the perfect place for this from the whole herd sentiment. And I thought this would make a really fun uh, group birthday card. There is a happy birthday sentiment in this stamp set, but I chose to go with the simply sentimental stamp set from Newton's Nook with its very large happy and then the small birthday because I was feeling like the area at the top was, um, there wasn't enough in that area. There was too much blank space and I wanted to make sure that I was balancing out the large scene on the bottom. And I also had decided that I wasn't going to color the background. I was going to leave it white. So I didn't want to add any clouds or anything up there to fill the space. 
And since I was definitely going to go with this happy birthday sentiment, which I actually did kind of decide in the middle of the card. At first, I was just stamping them because I thought they'd look cute in a scene together. But I decided that the, you know, the happy birthday from the whole herd would be super useful, like for a work birthday or something like that, or, you know, a bunch of people could give a card. And so since I'm going to go with the birthday theme, I am taking this little balloon from a Noon's Nook stamp set that I'll be showing you tomorrow. There's a birthday theme birthday themed stamp set coming out and I again cut it with a mask stamp the center balloon in two to the side we're engaging that rule of thirds again where it's you know or not the rule of thirds the rule of odds where it's good to you know make things in a group of three or five or so on and so I have that little gathering of balloons there and I'm also going to take my Copic multiliner and draw in some balloon, sh balloon strings there is some balloon strings included with the set but it was a little bit easier than remasking off everything so now I am ready to completely Copic color the scene and I'm not going to show you all the Copic coloring on camera because it was very long and time consuming and um, in order to get into some of those fine details I had to get quite close. But I'm just showing you a little bit here. Basically I'm doing two color blends throughout the whole card. So I'm, in this case I'm starting with W0, W00 and W1 to get the white parts of the cow and the white parts of the sheep and I'll be using W5 and W7 for the black areas of the sheep and the cow. Um, I'm keeping my color palette somewhat limited. I'm using the W markers as mentioned. I'll be using some B93, 95, and 97 to color in the farmer's outfit. His coveralls there. I'll be using some browns in E97 and 99 and some R's and what I believe is R14 and R17 and by keeping the colors pretty simple I think that gives a more cohesive look and I'm doing basically a two color blend where I put in a little bit of shadow and then blend it out with the lighter color. After I finished coloring in the scene and you can see there that like if I pulled the blue into one area I didn't I wanted to make sure there wasn't just one thing that was blue or that would draw your eye completely to it so I balanced out the blue in the farmers coveralls by coloring some of the balloons blue as well um, and then I pulled in like the orange from the chickens into the farmers hat just so again everything was pretty balanced and in order to create a mat for my stitched rectangle panel here I decided to do what you've seen me do a couple times recently where I'm just gonna take one of the Copic colors I used and draw in um, some color around the edge to create a solid colored mat. But in this case, I actually noticed that the corners got much darker than the, you know, uh, the edges. And so I decided to create more of a blended look and sort of make it look a little bit more intentional. Like I wanted the corners to be darker just by adding a little extra color and blending that out there. And then I'm going to lay the card panel on top and mount it on a white card base. And that's pretty much going to be it for this card. Um, you might see here that um, I'm pr like being kind of ginger and careful with it because I'm afraid to get ink where I don't want it because there's so much white space on this card and has this real clean and simple look. Um, and in this case, I'm cleaning off my Ranger craft sheet here with a little bit of the um, alcohol from the Adirondack ink blenders, the, the alcohol inks, you can use this as a blending solution, but since it's pure alcohol, it will also clean alcohol markers like Copics or Spectrum Noirs off your work surface. So if you're ever in a pinch and you don't have some rubbing alcohol, you can also use your alcohol blending solution and that will clean it up. So like I said, just going to mount that onto the mat and then onto a piece of white cardstock and that's it for my card today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafty videos, you can subscribe to my channel. I'm going to leave you links to the new and snook blog hop so you can hop along with us, see what the other girls have created, and to enter for your chance to win this stamp set. Thanks for watching. Bye.